Hi, Michael Puncher here. Look at this. This is a tardigrade, or also known as a water bear or moss piglet, and I'm really happy that I found one of them in my specimens. I'm going to now show you how I've done that, uh, and we're going to have a closer look at um, how this tardigrade moves around on my microscope slide. Yeah, and so this is where I found this little water bear. It's a rotten piece of wood that I placed into a jar of water so it does not completely dry up. And uh, over the a couple of weeks, it started to to turn slimy and start to smell pretty badly. So there was a lot of activity, microbial activity that is going on. Uh, so I took a little uh, sample from the rotten piece of wood, placed it on the slide, cover glass on top, everything went under the microscope and uh, I saw hundreds of worms, hundreds of tiny worms. I made already a separate video um, on these worms. So you might want to check out my channel uh, for this video. I also put a link below. Um, and uh, as I was looking at these worms, at the low and at high magnification I said well hmm, it's all quite nice and interesting uh, but I was kind of surprised that there are not more organisms more diverse organisms uh, in this uh, little sample um, so after a couple of minutes I was a little bit disappointed uh, but then I finally saw the tardigrade I just moved around a little bit uh, scanning the slide and then all of a sudden I said ah that's a familiar shape over there and here right now in the center of, of the slide is the tardigrade a little bit caught up uh, in algae and in bacteria and all of this slimy stuff that uh, you can find in the sample had some problems moving um, around a little bit um, because uh, the highly viscous material um, of the slime kind of inhibited its movement a little bit uh, but when I zoomed in I did see uh, for sure that is yes indeed is a water beer um, People call, also call this a moss piglet uh, because these water bears or tardigrades can be found also on moss. And all you have to do is, is you take a, a, a small sample of moss and you rinse it with water and this kind of flushes off the tardigrades. Then you uh, take a drop of this water and put it under the microscope. And if you're lucky, uh, you can find uh, those little uh, creatures here. Now tardigrades, um, well, they are animals, of course. So they belong to the animal kingdom, but they are their own phylum. So right beneath the kingdom, Kingdom, you have to sort the different phyla. There are quite a lot of these phyla and uh, they, the tardigrades, they form their own phylum. So this actually means that they're quite different uh, from the other animals uh, that we know. Um, they have eight legs, uh, but uh, they are not related to the spiders at all, uh, who also have eight legs, obviously. Uh, if you just look at it, you know it looks quite different. Um, but the spiders, for example, they belong to the arthropods, just like the insects, okay? But these are actually not even related to the insects, but they're completely separate separate category. What we can see here now is, is that the guy is now lying on its side and it's trying to uh, move ahead and has some problems moving ahead. Uh, it's got a flip on its belly or uh, so that it actually contacts uh, the glass uh, slide. It does not do that yet. Later on I'm going to show you that it actually does that. And uh, we can also then if you zoom in a little bit see that uh, yeah they have uh, claws and these claws that uh, they use these claws of course to move forward and to cling to certain surfaces. Now tardigrades are quite well known because they're extremely resistant or resilient uh, so this means that um, they can survive uh, dry periods they can uh, survive also um, hot periods and uh, lack of food and uh, cold temperatures in a very extreme environments as well which doesn't surprise me after all there are their own phylum and there are many different of the uh, different uh, tardigrade species around so they of course are adapted to different um, environments I even read that they sent some of these guys up to the space station um, to do experiments uh, with them now, why are tardigrades called tardigrades? Uh, the word tardigrade means slow walker uh, because they kind of walk slowly across uh, the slide when you look at them. Um, people also call them water bears because apparently they do look a little bit like bears. Well, as a matter of fact, I do think that they do look similar to these gummy bears that I have here. Um, but uh, other people also refer to them as moss piglets. In any case, uh, they can be found uh, quite easily in moss. Uh, and if you simply rinse some moss in a little bit of water, you can find flush them off and you can then put the water under the microscope and if you're lucky you're also going to find them there. Well, but I found mine on a decaying piece of wood. You see they seem to like a very diverse range of different habitats and as a matter of fact uh, they have also survived space because they took them up on the space station and they've also survived that.
Yeah, here we are again. Here at a slightly higher magnification is our little friend again. And now if you look carefully, you can actually start to see now the claws that they have on the legs. And uh, it uh, should not be surprising that they use them, of course, to crawl around also in the moss and to cling to various surfaces. So I can imagine that maybe it is not so easy to kind of flush them off from the moss directly. If they start to cling uh, to the moss, uh, then it might be kind of difficult to remove them. So my, maybe it makes sense to put the moss sample directly under the microscope. And here we have a large uh, magnification of the claws of one of those, uh, yeah, of the tardigrades that, uh, of this very uh, same uh, specimen that I put under the microscope. Yeah, here quite nicely visible. Yeah, now the guy flipped on, on its back or on its belly and now uh, we can watch it actually move along. Unfortunately, the glass slide, or fortunately, the glass slide is so smooth that it is a little bit, uh, it's always slipping. Um, so I say fortunately, otherwise it would probably run away and uh, it would be difficult to follow. Um, but uh, don't forget the whole thing is uh, still surrounded in water, okay? so. Um, it's uh, also slippery because of the, the liquid medium around it. And um, I kind of wonder what the guy is eating. Um, so I did some research, uh, of, of course, and uh, just like uh, the different environments that they like, they like also to eat different types of food. Um, some of those guys are even uh, carnivorous, uh, not only carnivorous, uh, they, are, they are cannibals uh, even. So they actually eat uh, smaller uh, tardigrades as well. Uh, many of them are plant eating. Ah, here, this other thing that you see there, that is a rotifer crawling right next to it. And on the top, uh, right there is the part of a worm, one of those worms. Okay, in any case, uh, yeah, uh, they are um, quite diverse also in the food that they eat. Uh, and now we see that, yeah, that's not time lapse, okay? Uh, you can see it a little bit better. And in, in the, if you also look carefully, you can also see that uh, there is the mouth. And I can imagine that uh, these tardigrades, not only imagine, I know that, that these tardigrades, many of them also eat bacteria, for example. Um, and so they are also very important in, in cleaning up uh, the environment and decomposing uh, material. Um, yeah. That's why you find them on also decaying wood, wood and decaying leaves because that's what they eat. Okay, here again uh, some uh, some claws, a close up again of the claws. And one of the things that I like about tardigrades as well is, is because they are semi transparent, uh, like many other of these water organisms, the semi transparent, therefore it's kind of uh, easy to also see what's going on inside the organism. Um, tardigrades are also quite interesting because they generally have a fixed number of cells within a species. Of course, they're different species, but within a species, they have a fixed number. Of cells. Um, so that's uh, in that sense they're different from humans. Uh, different humans have different number of cells but in the tardigrades they belong uh, to those uh, organisms where the cells are fixed uh, so scientists can actually count the number of cells um, that uh, one that the different species have. Yeah, now we see again much better what's going on inside the tardigrade. It's interesting how the, the, how the coordination of the legs is, uh, is actually happening here eight legs. I just see six of them now. I don't know. Okay, there are some of them maybe a little bit at the top right side, right out of the frame right now. Yeah, ah, this guy is tapping the surface with one of its legs. Yeah, so that is uh, the thing, the story of tardy, tardigrades. Um, if you want to observe them, then um, I highly um, encourage you to be patient. I mean, I did not find them so easily. I've checked several moss samples already before and had some problems finding them. Um, and therefore I will encourage you be patient uh, and uh, then you uh, certainly you're going to be lucky okay so that's it again uh, hope you liked it if you did please do consider subscribing and also uh, go into the descriptions uh, of the videos that I have here because uh, there are a whole bunch of interesting links and I think uh, there's a lot of information out there that will also help you uh, to pick up microscopy as a hobby if you have not already done so all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye-bye.